All right. Hello. Um, topic of today is going to be that of conservation of momentum. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start up the presentation. Um, and let's just go ahead and begin. So first of all, I start off by introducing the following essential question. So the essential question is, how is the total momentum of an isolated system conserved? Okay. Now, there's a lot of strong vocabulary words in there. Um, and there are probably vocabulary words that you haven't heard in several weeks. And so let's just do a quick review and let's dissect some of those words that I think that you're going to have a hard time with. So some quick definitions, total momentum. The total momentum is going to be the momentum of all of the objects added together. And that should make sense. We're taking kind of like the total energy, like we did before, that was the energy of all of the objects in the system that we defined, right? And that kind of leads you to the next definition, which is that of an isolated system. It's just a system that you as the physicist have defined that hopefully has no net external forces acting on it, okay? And the very last word is a word that we covered right before we went on break, or I shouldn't say break, um, quarantine, shelter in place. Um, it's the idea that the total value of a physical quantity remains constant in a system, um, which, you know, that also has some fancy vocabulary words in it. But, you know, when you think about it, okay, physical quantity, that could mean momentum, that could mean energy. And the idea of conservation just means that those values in your defined system remain constant over time, even if objects, you know, are losing momentum or energy or whatnot. And so to take a look really quickly back at that essential question, you know, how is the total momentum of an isolated system conserved? We're just saying in layperson speak, how is all of the added momentum of a system that I defined, how does it remain constant over time? And how we're going to explore that is we're going to explore that in the realm of collisions. And hopefully you've never been in a car accident before, um, but we're going to be taking a look at cars colliding with each other. We're going to be taking a look at objects that are colliding with each other. Um, and just see if we can gain some sense of a better idea of how this works. So here's your law of conservation momentum. Um, Momentum is conserved, but we're going to explore interactivity. What are the constraints of that? So the definition of the law of conservation momentum is that the total momentum of an isolated system does not change. Okay. Consider that our hypothesis for now. I know that you know it kind of is taken for granted that I'm kind of just handing you this definition. Um, but We'll consider our hypothesis right now. We'll, we'll go test to see what are the constraints of conservation momentum. Now, before we go into the activity, I have to define the types of collisions that there are. And fortunately for us, there are only two types of collisions. Okay. Um, so there's an elastic collision. Okay. An elastic collision is when two objects collide with each other um, and there's no deformation. So if you go back, and here I'm gonna go look back at this car, you'll see that this car right here and this car right here, when they collide with, a, with, with each other, that is a deformation, right? The, the car is crumpling to absorb some of that impact. So over here, an elastic collision just means that, you know, imagine the cars were bumper cars, right? And they just collided with each other. There was no deformation. It was just a perfect rebound. And the other type of collision, hopefully that you're able to guess, is just an inelastic collision. It just means that, you know, when they collide with two objects, collide with each other, then um, 
they're not elastic, which means that you know there is going to be some bending of the, the objects. Okay. So what that means is like, I can go ahead and take a look at the, the activity is FET collisions part one. Okay. And so your objective, if you take a look right here, we're going to determine what makes each collision different from the previous collisions. And we're going to predict how objects will move after a collision. Um, here's the link to the simulation. And before we fire that up, I want to just take a look at the directions. So the directions say, for this exercise, you will test whether momentum and energy are conserved. Part one deals with momentum. Um, so we'll be focusing on that. So we'll be testing whether momentum is conserved for elastic and inelastic collisions. Use this picture right here in case you need some reference, but ideally the whole point of this video is that I'm going to be showing you guys how to use this simulation to collect some data. So before we even open up the simulation, you'll take a look. You'll notice that there's three tables. So for the first table, we're going to be dealing with elastic collisions with elasticity set at 100%, meaning that these collisions are going to be a 100% elastic collision. If you scroll down here, you're going to be dealing with a 50% elastic collision. And then right here, you're going to have a 0% elastic collision, meaning that it's an inelastic collision. Okay. If you look at the table within, you'll also notice that it has some predefined values. So if you look at the picture right here, you're going to have a red ball colliding with a green ball. And you're going to be able to set those parameters. You're going to be able to set the parameter of the mass of each ball. And you're going to be able to set the parameter of the velocity of each ball. Okay, so now I think it's appropriate. Let's go ahead and let's open up the simulation. Um, so we'll click on this link. Okay, you should be able to press just play on it. Flash does run within the Chrome browser. Okay. All right, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on more data right here. And see, we'll get to define mass. We'll get to define position. Don't touch the position because honestly, it's kind of irrelevant. Um, as long as something is not acting on the object, right? It's not until the two objects interact with each other that the, the velocity is going to change. And here's going to be your velocities. Okay, so let's do the first one as an example. So for our collision A, we're going to have a mass of one, and we're going to have a velocity of four. And now we want to get the momentum. Okay, so the momentum is mass times velocity. So I'm going to go ahead and put m times v. One times four should be four. Now I only put uh, the equation there because just in case you forgot what the definition is. Um, for this context, I'm going to put positive four. And the reason I'm going to put positive four is you're going to see that in the future, we're going to be looking at negative velocity values. And so we'll have to cover what that even means. Okay, we'll take a look at the next one. So we're going to do m times v again. One times zero will be equal to zero. Okay, and so our total momentum is going to equal to four plus zero, which should equal to four. Okay. So if momentum is truly conserved, then we should expect that this value over here is also going to be four. So let's find out if that happens. So let's go to our FET collision. Here we're going to set the mass of our red object to one. Oops. And we're going to set its velocity to four. Okay. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to set the mass of the green object to one as well. And then its velocity will be zero. Okay, should be perfect. All you need to do is press play. And actually, after the collision has been completed, you're going to notice that the values don't change. Um, so I can continue to press play. The green ball will kind of just leave, right? But you'll see that the only values that we were interested in were the mass right here and the velocity right here. 
And so you'll take a look. Um, the red ball started off with a velocity of zero, uh, or sorry, with a velocity of four, and now it has a velocity of zero. Uh, the green ball started off with a velocity of zero, and now it has a velocity of positive four. So let's go ahead and put those values in. So velocity right here now is going to be equal to zero. Velocity is equal to positive four. Again, we'll just do m times v. So one times zero should be equal to zero. Okay. One times four will equal to four. All right. If we're going to do total momentum, that should be equal to zero. plus four, which for all us math geniuses in here, plus four. Okay. Kind of bugs me for a second that these aren't centered, so I'm gonna go ahead and center them real quick. Okay. All right, so we're done with the first one. Was momentum conserved? Yes, and hopefully that trend um, keeps up. Okay. So let's do example B together, and then we'll kind of go ahead and we'll call it that. Um, okay, so let's do this again. So 3 times 4, hopefully you're thinking 12. 3 times negative 4, negative 12. What's positive 12 minus 12 equals 0. Okay, so if momentum is conserved, that means that we should have a total momentum of zero at the end. And so let's go do that. So let's go over here. We're going to press the restart button. Okay. We're going to find some masses of three. Okay, we don't touch position. We're going to have positive four. And here we're going to have negative four. And so you'll notice that as soon as I defined a negative velocity, I had now an object that was going, or the velocity was pointed to the left. And so I'm bringing back that that idea that you know momentum is a vector. Okay, you have to remember that. And since momentum is a vector, that means that in our two or sorry one dimensional world, that means that we are either going to the left or we're going to the right. We're either going forward or we're going backwards. And the only difference between them is going to be that one has a positive value and one has a negative value. So we've defined our variables, masses of 3, 4, negative 4. Let's see what happens. Okay. And you'll see that what happened, the values just changed. So positive 4 became negative 4, and negative 4 became positive 4. So let's go ahead and let's put that in. So right here, we got negative 4. got positive 4. Okay. 3 times negative 4, negative 12. 3 times positive 4, positive 12. And so our total momentum, negative 12 plus 12 equals 0. Okay. So was momentum conserved? Perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> My wife was blowing her nose. <laughs> so was momentum conserved? Zero to zero. Yes, momentum was conserved. So your guys' task in the rest of part one is going to be to go through and figure out, is momentum conserved for all scenarios? Okay. And once you get past the first one, when you have to change the elasticity, we'll just go back to the simulation over here. You'll notice that right here is where they define our elasticity. Okay. And you guys will just take that and you'll bring it over to 50%. And then when you get to the last one, you'll go ahead and you'll drag it all the way to 0%. Okay. All right. That's it. Let me know if you have any questions um, and be sure to stop by my office hours. Take care.